Lord bless you more and more in Jesus' name. I welcome you to the month of June, and as you can see, I'm so, so excited uh, because this month will be the month of much fruits in the name of Jesus. No more dryness, no more barrenness, no more lack, no more poverty. Uh, you will eat the fruits of your labor. There will be no more labor loss. If you receive that, let me hear you shout a loud hallelujah. The theme for the month is much fruit. And in the second service, the message is titled, Let it rain, Lord. Oh, there will be showers of blessing this month. It will be in somebody's life and somebody's family whose amen can be really, really loud. Our text this morning will be just one verse of the scriptures, John 15, I will read only verse 5. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. A life that is not bearing fruit shall soon wither. In Matthew 7, verse 19, Matthew 7, verse 19, the Bible says, Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Fruitfulness is the desire of God for man. God loves fruit so much that in every opportunity to bless man, he does not fail to say, be fruitful. As a matter of fact, the very first blessing of God upon man in Genesis 1 verse 28, Genesis 1 28, the Bible says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful. I therefore command, I decree, I declare in everyone's lives, listening to me, I say be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. God hates unfruitfulness and fruitlessness. So much so that he caused the unfruitful victory. He expected that the victory should have fruits, but <laughs> there was none when he got there and he placed a curse on the tree. God cannot stand fruitlessness, he can't stand unfruitfulness. And that is why he keeps saying to his people, be fruitful, be fruitful, be fruitful. And I'm saying to your life this morning, I say, be fruitful, be fruitful, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus. When we talk about fruits, we are not talking just only about the fruit of the womb, of course. I mean, that's an integral part of it. But when we talk about fruits, we, we are talking about the fruit of your labor. It is, it is a terrible thing to have been in the U.S. for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years. There is nothing to show for it. There are people with PhD degrees. They are still jobless. When a life cannot produce evidence of God's faithfulness, then it is fruitless. That was why when Jesus got to the fig tree, he said, my faithfulness will have been revealed in you by having fruit. What is the use of your life? What is the use of my life when there are no fruits to show for? That's why the Bible says every tree that is not bringing forth fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. It's no use. Fruit talks about fruit of enlargement. By the grace of God, the church started on a two-bedroom house right in the front there if you see a red mark where they marked somewhere there that was all two bedrooms one room pastor's office one room usher's office a joint family restroom and then the living room was the sanctuary the garage was children's church that was all in 2006 but then God began to bring fruits 
Now, God gave us the youth church. We moved from that 2,000 to 4,085 you know, square footage, which is now the youth church. Oh, when we moved to that, it looked like a massive building. Well, I mean, October 18, 2009, the church was three years old. Daddy Joe came here. He said, oh, very cute church. Very, very massive in our eyes, and we rejoiced. But then God took us and bring us to this place which is about 30,000 square footage. From that little 2,000 square footage. Now it has given us a pavilion that is 15,000 square footage. Now the daycare is building their property. That is fruitfulness. May your life be fruitful from now on. When a man cannot show, have nothing to show for his endeavor, it's fruitlessness. You've given your life to Christ for years. And yet, on your account, we cannot find souls that we can say through you, these people had come to know the Lord. That's fruitlessness. I'm believing the Almighty God that before this month runs to an end, you will become exceedingly abundantly fruitful in the name of Jesus. There will be no more labor loss in the name of Jesus. Every effort will produce results in the mighty name of Jesus. Peter toiled all night long, caught nothing. People have been toiling. They, are, they have been toiling. They are not like lazy, but they have been toiling and toiling and toiling. And they have nothing to show for the effort. May I prophesy to your life that toiling is over in the mighty name of Jesus. In God's principle of fruitfulness, three conditions must be fulfilled to have fruit. I'll go through them very quickly, then I will soon be done. In Genesis 2 and in verse 5, Genesis 2 verse 5, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Three conditions for fruit. Number one, it says the plant was in the ground. You must sow a seed to expect harvest of fruit. You must go to the ground. You must till the ground, number two, to keep the seed alive. And number three, the rain must fall for the harvest of fruit. At creation, the seeds were right in the ground. The Bible says God did not allow rain to fall on it because if rain were to fall, then there will be fruit. But then God had not created man, so God made sure it didn't rain. In other words, to have harvest, the rain must fall. But the rain must not fall on nothing. The rain must fall on the seed that is in the ground. And there must be tilling, maintenance, nurturing going on. Then you have fruit and abundant fruit. So let's pick them one by one. The first condition is that you must sow a seed to expect harvest of fruits. In John 2, 12, 24, John 12, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. When people here sow a seed, the first thing that jumps into their heart, some develop blood pressure right away. <laughs> the first thing that jumps to people's mind is, oh, money. Of course, money is a seed. But believe me honestly, the very first seed that I believe God is looking for is your life. There are deposits, reserves in your life that God is wanting you to use 
for his glory. To bear fruit, those talents, giftings, skills, knowledge must be sown. Otherwise, you become fruitless. I don't do this except the Lord has laid in my hand. I, I, I don't like picking on people directly. But in 2016, the church turned 10. And the choir called a meeting. The pastor, we thank God for these 10 years. The choir, the Lord has helped us. But we need a music director. I'm telling you of somebody somewhere, they, you know, I said, look, let us pray about this. And while we were in the conversation, somebody mentioned the name of our music director, Sunday Alimiro. I said, I've met him before. I know, I know his pastor, saying him in his church in Nigeria. He said, maybe it would be a good, good idea. And I said, that's true. But I've, I've not, I've not thought about that. But let's, Let's keep praying. So I got home. I didn't say anything to my wife. Saturday, it was, I uh, believe, Raquel's graduation and Victoria. And my wife and I won the way. Said, By the way, I forgot to tell you when we woke up. You know, overnight. You know that brother in Nigeria, uh, you know, I told him, I said, yeah, the one married to Mr. Bisi's sister, yeah, you know, Buki. I said, yes, I saw the two of them in my dream. And they said, can you make a way for us into the U.S. I said, what? That I was in with choir yesterday. <laughs> they mentioned the name and I just said, let's be praying. This has to be God. I have not even told you anything about this. I said, I said, it must be. Now, the following week, I was traveling to Nigeria. So as I was going, my wife doesn't get it, uh, herself too much involved in any, uh, it has to be children or women. The rest of the things, well, she shows interest. But this one, she said, when you get to Lagos, don't forget to go and talk to Tunde's pastor about them coming here. Ah, I said, did that serious? <laughs> as I landed in Lagos, I called my wife as I would normally do. And she said, don't forget to call. When I woke up the following morning, she said, have you called? So on Sunday, I went to the church. I normally would minister in their church. The pastor is close to me. I know how, that they are very busy in the church. And I wasn't just sure that the pastor will agree with the idea. So I said, before I cause problem between pastor and members, let me privately discuss with the pastor. Say, sir, you don't have to agree with me. But I believe God needs today the wife, the family, in the U.S., this and this and this, what has happened? Say, ah! Say, that would be a big hole, big gap. But he said, I believe God wants to reward this family. He said, when other music ministers are running around, Tunde is in church. We even wanted to give him money. He said, I don't want money. He's here all the time. The wife is here all the time. You know, serve him faithfully. I mean, I believe God wants to reward them. In any case, maybe they will transfer him anytime soon. So I'm not going to deny them. They labored in this place. The talent that God has given to them, they used here. Say, so that's good. So you will be the one to tell them. So can you call them? And the pastor told them. He went to the embassy. Now they came here. They began to serve like before. Now her music director is also the president of TKP Music Academy today. The wife is a senior staff of the Redeemer's Learning Center. Listen to me. What is it that God has given to you? How are you making use of it? Because your fruits cannot show 
except is released. There are many people here with great talents, great skills, great knowledge. But he has got no use for Jesus. I want you to think again. If you die without talent, not bringing any fruit, even if you make it to heaven, you'll be ashamed of yourself. A life that must bear fruit is a life that gives all to Jesus. I was on cross posting here, used to work for Slumberger. The plan, the career plan was laid out was to just be here for two or three years and then it was a career move. <laughs> When I resumed 1st of December, 2005, by 31st of December, 2005, many things had happened before then. Uh, God said, now is the time. You are going to leave this job. <laughs> and now we are going to serve you. And now, God had given us this property earlier on, April, I think 24th, 2005, eight months before I resumed the work. By God's grace, my wife and I, we're paying the, the mortgage because the city of Katy didn't allow us to start because they said it was a commercial property we bought and we have to rezone to religious. And that lasted 11 months. So it made no sense to me, Lord, how are we going to pay my mortgage, the church mortgage and all the different expenses? God insisted, leave this job. In January, I was struggling. In February, I was struggling. In March, it came head on. Now, you leave this job or you die here. Uh, for me and God, is what he wants or the other one is he want to die. Oh, Sunday night, it would be like a big stone on my chest, like that. And finally, <laughs> 1 a.m. one day, I woke up. I told my wife, this is what the Lord is saying. If I wrote my resignation letter, I presented it to her. It was the shortest, I mean, I, HR manager at the time. I've seen many recognition letters, but I've never seen anyone shorter than mine. It's very short. My wife said, I'm on your side. I've observed you these three months. Believe you are struggling on something. I got to the office. I saw some, oh my God, where everybody knows you can't do this, you know. <laughs> so where, where are you going? We can, it was a year where the company will match Whatever any company was giving you, you know, if you are an high potential, I port they call it. So no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to go and pastor. So, but we have all these pastors from Nigeria. What's the difference? Well, I don't know. Ask God. But I'm, I have to go. So I left. And to be honest with you, a part of my brain says, "Well, I have my payoff. That can take care of things." for one year at the minimum, even if we went on holiday or do anything. And if after one year, <laughs> if, if God doesn't show up, <laughs> then I will still be employable. But God is smarter than man. As soon as I took the money, city of Katy came and said, you need 33 parking lots. That was $40,000. And they demanded a second driveway, 7.5, making 47.500. There was no other place to get the money except for my payoff. Not to bore you, in no time, about 80% of the payoff was gone. <laughs> I remember we get to the office, you sit down there. The first month they called me that your copay was uh, insurance copay, you overpaid. So they sent me 4,900, I think it was, actually 5,100. Then in May, they called me and said, your 401k, your, your contribution, we didn't pay it correctly. They sent me a check of 4,900. By June, a senior colleague called me and said, I told him the last day I was going, he said, I've left Slumberger as well. I've joined another company. I'm the MD of the 
holding company. I have resumed there. They have a big problem. The kind of problem that we had in 1998 when you were the compensation and benefits manager. Can you help us resolve the issue? I said, God, say I should not. <laughs> I left now, you know. Say, no, I'm not saying that. You come to Nigeria, you see the mess, you come back to the US, you tell us how to clean the mess, and then we pay you. Ah. Say, that sounds like consulting. Say, exactly. So I wrote them uh, needs assessment. I was writing it for the first time. He said, wow. <laughs> Travel to Nigeria. My wife said, how much are you going to charge? I said, let's get there first. I've not charged before. <laughs> and the HR manager himself volunteered an amount, which was two years my life salary. My wife said, add some money to it. <laughs> so ah, I said, it's two years. It's two years my life salary. She said, yes. I mean, the worst, they will say, you will say no more. So I had some money. The fellow said, that is good, that's good. It's still okay. I came back. After, you know, uh, by the way, I tied it to a an, an convention in Lagos. After a convention, I came back. I spent about 40 hours to work on it. I told my wife, I've done. She said, no, 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 no. Not after how much. I said, look, is that I've done nonsense? Oh, I'm done. He said, okay, stay another two weeks. Don't call them. Long story short. When I went into their boardroom to make the presentation, the CFO who had been giving problem to other companies who came was standing up. He didn't see that until I finished. When I was done and they gave me the check, it was two years. My final salary. I came down. I saw another man. I was his biggest client uh, when I was in the corporate. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I, said, I left. Ah, what are you doing here? I came to help fix some problems. Ah, we have some problem too. That was one year my salary. Now, within about six months, I have three, three years of my salary. I said, hmm, this thing is working. <laughs> because when the seed dies, when you lay it on the altar, it bear fruit. There are challenging days and times. You know, it got to a stage when the money became sweet and it was, it was pulling me everywhere. I can travel eight times to Nigeria. I knew that if I don't do, I didn't do something quickly, I will run into a different trouble. God can take it again. So I told God, 12, I will not miss for running around for business more than 12 times at a time, I said. I blocked uh, what they call the power conference, children's church, um, children's, and children's week, youth week, women's week, men's week, all the Sundays I can't travel. But that January, <laughs> we didn't escrow our tax. Tax was waiting. This one was waiting. That was waiting. Then I got a consulting to run training for three days. And it was about $45,000. One in Lagos, one in Abuja, one in uh, Port Harcourt. I've prepared my manual already. And the company called me and said, Tunde, sorry, can we move the training one week forward? I had given that week to one of my brothers who runs a company to come and do you know, a corporate retreat for them. And I don't do business with my brothers. If you call me to do training or something, I just go like a pastor, you give me an honorarium, that's it. They wanted to pay, and I said, no, 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 no. I will come, I'll do the three days retreat, I'll give me an honorarium, I go. So I couldn't call them because they are moving people out of their rig and things like that. So I told them, sorry. Um, I have a commitment. It's okay. What about the following week? He said, I have power conference. <laughs> so what's that? They canceled the business. Ha. Because I have just made the commitment to God. It's okay. No problem. Now I had to travel for my brother's event. I didn't even tell him. I remember that was not business. But I arrived in Lagos. 
travel to the place of the train. I think it was the second day of the train. My wife called me. <laughs> said, who, who transferred $30,000 to your account? I said, no, don't touch it. I have not transferred any money. So, I called to me. Okay, let me find out from these people. They, 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 he said, oh, can check with my assistant. So, I said, he said, yes, yeah, they smile. I said, this training, last year when we spent more than this, and since you are not going to allow us to pay, that's our honorarium. Ha, $30,000 honorarium. <laughs> and when we finished the third day, in the days when Naira was probably 120 or 100 to dollar, they cut a check of two million, they said, for local expenses. Say, ah, this is good. <laughs> I got to Lagos. I was going to travel the following day. Somebody said, I met him at the airport. He said, what are you doing? I said, I came from. And I said, do you have one day to spare? I said, yes. So what do you want? He said, come and train my employees. And us. I went there. I was going. Another two million. By the time I left, I had 47,000. God is not a magician. To be a fruit, the talent, the gifting that he has given to you, you must lay it for his glory. You are missing out a lot, you don't know. Sometimes when they are doing women's weekend, I see some people singing like angels. Say, this one, you are in this church. You are not in the choir. There are many fingers. If you see what they do on the social media, you won't believe it. You are not in the media. You are missing. I have not even gone halfway, but you know I'm going to close now. The second point, the first one I said, you must sow a seed to expect harvest of fruits. The second point is you must till the ground to keep the seed alive. There's a time of nurturing. We are very poor in nurturing. When RLC started, with Mass Learning Center, all the people that could be directors wanted to be paid 3,500. <laughs> we have not started any, we had only three students. I mean, where are we going, how are we going to pay? And we are the we are rock bottom fee. God spoke to my wife, stepped in as the director. There was no salary to pay her from anywhere. But she was nurturing, nurturing, nurturing. Today, when I look at her, I say, I just paid my staff bonus. I say, <laughs> oh, Lord, come on, give the Lord a really big hand of praise. I said, ah, you paid one bonus last month. Oh, he said, yes. But staff are very expensive now. This month, I've paid them another bonus. I said, I need to come and work for RFC. <laughs> now, they are building, I'm sure you know. They are full to capacity. If you don't register on time now, you may not find space in the new building very soon. But why? If she has said, if you can't pay me, sorry, I cannot do, I can't go and be working for... No, it's difficult. It's not easy. And it's not easy. To run daycare, it's not. But there's a time of nurturing. And I'm sure if you pay your staff bonus, you must earn bonus. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a really big clap. <laughs> Many of us sometimes are able to bring the talent but we are not ready for the nurture. As I close now. The thought is that the rain must fall. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6, I have planted. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Without rain, fruits dry up. And harvest are wasted. Rainfall is a product of God's mercy. 
Amos 4 verse 7. Amos 4 verse 7. I will read very slowly. In fact, if you can read with me, that will be good. I also withheld rain from you when there was still three months to the harvest. I made it to rain on one city. I withheld rain from another city. One part was rain upon, and where it did not rain, the part withered. God said, I decide where I want the rain to fall. I decide. And if you put the seed in the ground, you nurture it, and it doesn't rain, what will happen? But I discover from Jesus that there, is, there are certain things you can do that heaven must open. Rain must fall. I have enough time to deal with the one I consider the most important. There are five of them. I will make mention of the five of them. And I will talk about one of them and then I will be done. Number one, load the heaven with the sacrifice of service and see the reign of pleasures and prosperity. You see, if you, if you, if you did some basic geography, there's always evaporation before the rain begins to fall. You load the sky and then it falls. You want rain to fall? There are certain things you must send to heaven. One of them is service. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Number two, load the heavens with the sacrifice of giving and see the rainfall of generational blessings. Abraham sacrificed or offered to sacrifice Isaac. As far as God was concerned, Isaac was already sacrificed. If God had not stopped him, he would have sacrificed him. And God said, by myself have I swore. In blessing, I will bless you. Thy seed, I will multiply. Don't let anybody fool you. There are no gimmicks with God. He's a God of principle. Number three. Load the heavens with mercy and see the rainfall of mercy. Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. There are people that... They are mean and wicked. How do you think you will harvest mercy? When God is looking for where he wants to release rain, he said, that one, no, is it, mean. She's wicked. Number four, load the heaven with prayers, repentance, and righteousness, and see the rainfall of breakthroughs. Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14, if I shut up heaven, and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. We forgive their sin, and we heal their land. The most important from the study of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ is number five. Load the heavens with thanksgiving and see the rainfall of a ceaseless flow of the miraculous. Jesus will always thank God the Father ahead of every miracle. When he was going to multiply the bread, Jesus took the bread and he said, I thank you. John 6, 11. John 6, 11. And Jesus took the, the loaves and when he had given thanks, in John 11, 41, John 11, 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 24, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, broke it. There are too many ingrates around and when you remain an ingrate, you can be sure of dryness. The life of Samson dried up so terribly because he was not a man of praise and thanksgiving. Study the life of, of Samson. God used him so mightily. 
with a job of an ass, he killed a thousand. If the rest had waited, he would have finished them. What did he say? He put upon him. If upon him, Samson had killed 1,000 with a job of an ass. I mean, that happened to David. We build an altar of praise for days. You want rain to fall on your seed, your talent? Thank God. Some have heard me share the story of this young boy. Whenever anything happens, he will recite First Thessalonians 5, 18, in all things, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He was a very close friend to the king of the land. So the king liked him so much, he would take him for hunting because he was also a very good hunter. One day he was teaching the king how to hunt and mistakenly, cut the finger of the king and he was bleeding. And the king looked at him, wanting him to say sorry. But instead of saying sorry, he said, sir, in all things, give thanks. So the king was angry. So, you're making a mockery of me. Send him to jail. He was in jail. So the king started going with the little skills he has for, for hunting by himself. One day, a ritualist came and grabbed the king. They took the king to the shrine to kill him, and they saw the injury in his hand, and the priest of that evil shrine said, hey, stop. Our idol cannot take the life of anyone with a blemish. This fellow has a blemish in the hand. Let him go. Ah! The kings ran and said, oh my God, go and get my friend, go and get my friend. The young man came. The king narrated the story. The king said, oh, see, I've just allow you to go into prison for nothing. That injury actually is for good. In all things, I give thanks. Sorry, sorry. The boy said, ah, sorry. In all things, give thanks to God. The king said, why you, everything is in order. You have been in jail for a long time. I said, ah, king, if I wasn't in jail, they would have taken the two of us. You, you have injury. <laughs> Me, I don't have injury. I would have been the one they slaughtered. In all things, let somebody give thanks to God. Let's rise now and give thanks to God. Let's give thanks to God. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Go ahead and thank God for everything you know. Thank God. Give him praise. Thank him from your heart. 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 Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all the adoration. Father, we thank you. Go ahead and tell the Almighty God, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Over my seed, over my talent, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain. My Lord and oh my God, let it rain, let it rain fall. Let it rain. Cry to God and say, Lord, let it rain. Let it rain. My Lord and oh my God, let it rain. Let it rain. Open the heavens and let it rain on me. Let it rain on my seed for a great harvest. Father, open the heavens and let it rain on me. Let it rain on my seed. Let it rain on my harvest. Lord, let me begin to bear much fruit. Let me begin to bear much fruit. My Lord and my God, help me. Help me, Lord. Father, help me bear much fruit from now on. Help me to bear much fruit from now on. Thank you, Abba Father. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are not born again, even if it appears that you are bearing fruit, the enemy is not far away to devour it. That's why I want to beg you in the name of the Lord that you sow your life now. Give that life to Jesus and see how it turns your life around. So if you are here, you've not given your life to Christ, you are the one to raise your hand to heaven. Let God see it and say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. If you are in the virtual church, do the same thing and pray this prayer and say, Lord, save my soul. I give my life to you. I surrender all to you. I'm born again. Save my soul. In the name of Jesus. If you pray that prayer, then I can assure you, 
your life cannot be the same again. But we need you to reach out to us on the number on the screen. Please make sure you do so, so we can continue to pray with you and for you. Father, I thank you for your word. Let it rain, O Lord. Open the heavens. Let it rain over our lives, over our seeds, over our family. Let it rain, O Lord. So that from now on we begin to bear much fruit in the name of Jesus. And those that have given their life to you this morning, save their souls to the very end. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, if you receive your own blessing, go ahead, give the Lord a really big, 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 big clap offering, and then you may be seated.